Greetings and welcome back. Kamal here with a very interesting integral. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of x divided by e to the x squared plus e to the negative x squared. And the whole thing is actually squared. So yeah, that's a pretty interesting structure. The solution development is really nice and the final result is just gorgeous. So how exactly should we begin? Well, from the denominator, I'd like to factor out this e to the x squared term first. So we'll write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared divided by, let's see, we got e to the x squared, 1 plus e to the negative 2x squared left. And this whole thing is, of course, squared. So e to the x squared squared is e to the 2x squared. So I can write this as the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared divided by e to the 2x squared, terribly sorry about that, times 1 plus e to the negative 2x squared squared dx. And of course we can expand using e to the negative 2x squared, which would cancel out the term in the denominator. And let me just move this around a bit. Yeah, much better. And in the numerator we now have e to the negative 2x squared. Okay, cool. What we can invoke now is the geometric series. Because we know that 1 by 1 plus x can be expanded as the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k times x to the k, provided that the absolute value of x is less than 1. And this, of course, is valid for e to the negative 2x squared. This thing is less than 1 on the interval 0 to infinity. Okay, cool, but the problem is we don't just have 1 plus x or something. We have 1 plus something squared, which can be fixed without any issue whatsoever. All we have to do is differentiate the whole thing with respect to x. So that gives me negative 1 by 1 plus x squared on the left, and on the right we have the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times k times x to the k minus 1 by the power rule. Now because you have this extra term of k, for k equal to 0, we get a 0 term, so we can just ignore that, and start off with the sum at k equal to 1. And if we multiply the equation by negative 1, we'll have negative 1 to the k plus 1 on the right, times k times x to the k minus 1, and on the left we have 1 by 1 plus x squared which is pretty cool. But, of course, we don't just have x, we actually have e to the negative 2x squared. So all we need is a transformation, x to e to the negative 2x squared. So we get 1 by 1 plus e to the negative 2x squared, whole thing squared, equal to the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times x, which is now e to the negative 2x squared, all to the k minus 1. Now, of course, this would give me the sum over k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times e to the negative 2x squared, 2kx squared, that is, times e to the positive 2x squared. And we can expand by the multiplicative inverse of e to the 2x squared and get e to the negative 2x squared divided by 1 plus e to the negative 2x squared squared equal to the sum over k of negative 1, terribly sorry about that, in fact I think I missed another term here, yeah, I missed a k term, so let me just give myself some more writing space, and I just took the 1 there as well, here's the k, and here's the other k, so that means we have negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k times e to the negative 2kx squared. And this is actually really nice, because notice that we have the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared times exactly this thing, which we replace by the series representation. So we have a sum over k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k times e to the negative 2kx squared dx, the x squared term being independent of the index variable k, so we take it inside the summation operator. And we have the integral from 0 to infinity of the sum over k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 
times x squared, wait, times k times x squared times e to the negative 2kx squared dx. Now, of course, we can switch up the order of the integration and summation operators, given that there is no problem regarding convergence. We see that we have polynomials in k and x times this damped exponential term. So that means on switching up the operators, we have the sum over k of the integral from 0 to infinity, and we have negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k, which are both independent of the variable x with respect to which we're integrating. So that means we can take them outside the integration operator. And we have negative 1 to the k plus 1 times k, and we're left with the integral of x squared times e to the negative 2k x squared dx. What we have now is a pretty standard integral to evaluate. We'll call it i sub k, so i sub k equals integral 0 to infinity, x squared times e to the negative 2x squared dx. And we'll start off by letting 2k x squared, or rather x times root 2k equal to u, which implies that dx equals du divided by root 2k. And of course the limits are not bothered, so we have i sub k equal to 1 by wait a minute, we have the integral from 0 to infinity, and first we have x squared, which is u squared divided by 2k, then we have e to the negative u squared, and then we have du divided by root 2k. Interesting. So that means we have 1 by 2 times root 2 times 1 by k to the 3 halves of the integral from 0 to infinity of u squared times e to the negative u squared du. And now we could use another transformation that is letting u squared equal t. And this implies on differentiation that du equals 1 by 2 times root t dt. So this implies that i sub k is now 1 by 2 times root 2 times 1 by k to the 3 halves times the integral from 0 to infinity of t times... Wait, we have t divided by root t, so that's t to the 1 half times e to the negative t dt, and we have this extra factor of 1 half that goes outside, giving us a 4. And this thing over here is just the gamma function. So we have gamma 1 half plus 1, meaning that we have 1 half times gamma 1 half, which is, of course, 1 half of root pi. Okay, cool. This is quite nice. So this implies that i sub k equals... 1 by 8 times root 2 times 1 by k to the 3 halves times root pi. So I'll just take the root pi up here, or I'll just write this as 1 eighth of root pi by 2. So that's the result for i sub k. Now, the target integral i actually required us to take the sum over the positive integers k of negative 1 to the k plus 1, times k, terribly sorry about that, times k times the result of i sub k, which is, of course, root pi by 8 being a constant. So we have 1 eighth of root pi by 2. I still need just a bit more writing space to make this slightly more presentable. So we have root pi by 2. My handwriting is horrible, so the least I can do is, you know, write it as clear as I can. And we're left with this k to the 3 halves term, which is quite nice. We have some cancellation, meaning that we have 1 eighth of root pi by 2 times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k plus 1 divided by k to the 1 half, which we recognize as the Dirichlet eta function at 1 half. So we have this really cool relationship between the Dirichlet eta function and the Riemann zeta function, whereby eta s equals 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus s of zeta s. So that means all we have to do is plug in s equal to 1 half, giving us the target integral i equal to 1 eighth of root pi by 2 times what exactly do we have? We have 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus 1 half being one-half times zeta one-half. 
So one minus one half, one half is again, oh wait, we have one minus root two. Yeah, basic math has become quite scary. So we have root pi by two times one minus root two times zeta one half. That's a horrible looking zeta. That's much better. Wow, that is pretty cool. And we might as well expand this a bit because the result does look really nice. So we have root pi minus root two pi divided by eight times root two times zeta one half. Now, this is the result for the integral from zero to infinity of x divided by e to the x squared plus e to the negative x squared whole thing squared dx. And if we multiply the result by four, then on the left, we would have the hyperbolic cosine function in the denominator, which also looks very cool. So expanding by four gives us the integral from zero to infinity of x squared divided by, wait, we have cosh squared x squared. Wow, that does look really exotic. Equal to root pi minus two times root pi divided by two times root two times zeta one half. A very exotic result indeed. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram. And in case you like the effort I'm putting out, consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.